Microsoft earnings came out in August and um, good numbers yet again. You can see the performance of the stock here since March, the March lows last year. We saw fresh all-time highs again in August. So is this going to be the theme for the rest of the year? Further gains, new highs, or actually, is it perhaps in danger of selling off in the months ahead? I thought it'd be interesting to do an update uh, on Microsoft, given that we've had earnings for the company um, in August. You can see the performance. It's been a um, real steady uptrend uh, for the Microsoft stock. August uh, was no exception, pushed up to its uh, best levels ever, trading above $300. Um, a little bit sideways since then, but at the moment it is sitting just below those, uh, those fresh all-time highs. We have seen in recent days, of course, some weakness uh, in stock markets, and that has, I think, weighed on Microsoft as well. So I thought, let's take a look at where might it go for the rest of the year from here. Take a look at the recent earnings, um, look at the levels to watch, then we'll come back onto the platform and take a look at the technicals in a bit more detail. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com, and I thought it would be interesting to do an update on Microsoft, taking a, uh, maybe a longer term look at, medium term look at to the end of the year, see where we can expect the stock to go. So as usual in this video, I'll talk a bit about the recent news, the earnings, um, the big levels to watch, then we'll jump onto the trading platform and take a look at things um, in a bit more detail. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, if you could click on subscribe, um, it does help support the channel. It means we can continue to push out lots of different content throughout the week uh, on the various markets that we look at. Um, right, let's get into it and take a look at Microsoft in a bit more detail. The company was founded uh, by Paul Allen and of course um, Bill Gates back in 1975 and came to the market in March 1986. So um, since then, that's where you've been able to buy stock in Microsoft for about the last 35 years. It's well known, of course, for its um, PC operating system, um, Windows, its office suite of products used by companies and individuals around the world, um, perhaps not as popular with uh, on the Internet Explorer side of things. But then, of course, there is its Xbox and various uh, hardware, such as the Microsoft Surface PCs. It's been a great performer over the years. If we look back over the last five years to 2016, the share price has increased almost sixfold over those last five years. And it's put in a great performance this year as well. For the year to date, at the time of recording, Microsoft uh, stock is up by about 37% in 2021. We keep seeing solid earnings from Microsoft. The latest were no exception to that. Uh, we had fourth quarter earnings in July of this year, so a couple of months ago. The market was expecting earnings per share of around about $1.92. Comfortably beat that coming in uh, with earnings per share of $2.17. But it has suffered, um, I think like many, all sorts of businesses have suffered from supply chain problems around chips because of the, the global microchip shortage. So Microsoft saw uh, sales of its Surface PCs down by about 20% from the same time last year due to this ongoing chip problem. But again, I don't think that's a massive part uh, of its business. So we, hadn't seen, we haven't seen it affect earnings too much. The stock continues to push higher. Um, yet again in August, we saw it move out to fresh all-time highs. Are we going to see more all-time hit highs hit uh, in the months to come? We'll take a look at the charts and the technicals in a sec. Let's just talk about the big levels to watch first of all. So I think the immediate level on the, on the upside, it's not far away from where we are now. Those all-time highs hit in August uh, around $306 for the stock. After that, I think we're looking at psychological levels, so $325 uh, next. On the downside, I think the most recent major low uh, was towards the end of July. That came in around $283. So for now, this trend seems solid. Of course, there's always the risk that um, stock market or sentiment by investors towards stock markets can change given the strong rise it's had over the last uh, 15, 16 months. But as usual, let's put some color into all of this and take a look at the Microsoft charts in a bit more detail. It's been a great trend in Microsoft, like many stocks, since the March lows of 2020. Um, I thought we'd put a 20-day moving average on, as usual, uh, and just take a look at things. And you can see, uh, particularly since uh, June of this year, the latest run higher, how that moving average has done a pretty good job of acting as almost like a floating support for the Microsoft stock price. We get the odd dip below it, uh, like here, of course, uh, earlier in September. 
we saw the price dip below uh, the moving average as it fell below three hundred dollars uh, for the stock. We'd seen a bit more broader stock market weakness uh, in the last couple of weeks, and that has weighed on stocks such as Microsoft, obviously. But in the last couple of days, we've seen the stock flip above once more and um, move higher. Uh, so the latest signal from this 20-day moving average uh, has been a buy signal. So from that point of view, it's suggesting the trend is still up. If we take a look at the RSI, it's a great illustration here, I think, of how it can be dangerous uh, or not profitable, at least, to go with extreme RSI readings uh, in a strong trend. You know, the RSI on Microsoft, this is a 10-day RSI. So since late June through to um, the middle of August, or late August, actually, uh, so a couple of months here, the RSI spent an awful lot of time being overbought. But of course, the stock price carried on higher. So um, just because uh, an overbought, oversold oscillator is giving you a signal in one direction, you still need to pay attention to the trend. And that trend clearly has still, still been up. The latest move on the RSI didn't quite get into overbought territory, has sold off um, a bit since then. So perhaps a bit of a mix, Peter, suggesting that it could be a little bit overheated up here, but again, given the strength of the trend, I wouldn't be putting too much weight on the RSI at the moment. So I think the trend is still the all important thing. So let's take a look at it. If we went back to the March 2020 lows, uh, when the stock slipped, uh, where was it? Around $138 and, and below that briefly. Uh, we're now at $304. So we've seen the price more than double off those um, March lows. And here's the trend. Uh, here's the trend for me anyway. There's our, our trend line for me at the moment. That trend line support is coming in around $270 for the stock. So I think even if we saw it slide 10%, for example, from where it is currently at the time of recording, that trend um, is still up. So uh, I, think, I think for me, for now at least, the technicals do suggest to still be uh, a buyer of dips. Uh, and I think if we did see it slip much below 270, then perhaps that trend is in trouble and we could be looking at a fall initially back to the mid-May lows, um, just below $240 for the stock. So overall, still positive. Arguably has lost some momentum over the last few weeks, as we have seen perhaps a bit more investor nerves for the broader stock market. But for now, at least, assuming we're going to see those all-time highs taken out, those August highs taken out, um, and given the typical short-term trading range for the stock is around about $20, I think some technical analysts would take the view if you see 305 broken, then the next target for the stock uh, could be for a run up to $325. So that trend is still strong. I think 270 is good support on the downside. Let's watch to see if it can break 305 in the days ahead and um, set up another rally and perhaps a bit more strength into year end. That's it for the update. Um, we'll come back to it and see how they're performing uh, in the months ahead. But that trend still looks solid for now. We'll see if it continues to push out to fresh all-time highs. But from me, David Jones and Capital.com, we'll leave things there. Good luck with your investing. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.